My living room is a place to relax and indulge in some of my hobbies outside of the office. As I spent more time at home, this became increasingly important and provide me with some work-life balance. This video will be the first episode of my living room makeover series, so stay tuned till the end to get a peek of what's to come. Recently, I moved my work desk inside into a dedicated home office, leaving me with an empty spot in the living room. I've always wanted a proper coffee grinder and espresso machine, which would be a perfect addition to this space. After doing some research and scouring through Pinterest, I decided to do a long cabinet that stretches all the way to the TV area. Typically, this requires a custom-built unit which can be very expensive. So, I browsed through IKEA and found the best storage system. I utilized their online planner to mix and match different sizes and drawers. My living room is roughly 6 meters wide, and each Besta unit is roughly 60 centimeters. To leave a bit of space at the end for a floor lamp and some plants, I opted for 9 units or a total length of 5.4 meters. I went through a few iterations before landing on the final configuration. Some of it was quite awful, but that is part of the design process. A few days before my orders arrived, I listed all of my existing furniture that I no longer plan to use on Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree. I managed to make $350, which is roughly a quarter of the cost for the new cabinets. With everything sold, I now have a bigger space to work on which makes the whole assembling process easier. First, I started with the frame for the entertainment unit, which is roughly 2.4 meters long. Instead of going with default IKEA legs, I ordered a bunch of matte black legs from Swedish company Pretty Packs, which came fully equipped with standard M8 bolts and universal plates. This makes it easy to attach to the base of the best of frame, as well as various other furniture. The universal plates are used to connect multiple Besta units, in order to use fewer legs rather than the standard 4 legs per unit which can look cluttered. Once the base of the entertainment unit is done, I flipped them over and started building the frame. It is a pretty straightforward process and quite repetitive as they all follow the same steps. Before moving on to the sideboard, I got a TV bracket that goes together with the Besta TV unit, allowing for a more seamless look. It attaches directly to the frame, which will allow me to push everything onto the wall with very little gap. It also came with a swivel arm, which is very easy to assemble. Overall, the bracket took less than an hour to assemble, and allows me to float the TV without drilling any holes into the wall. It is also a great way to route cables, going directly into the TV unit where the power board is located. Later on, I decided to remove the swivel arm as it left a really big gap between the TV and the wall. Once the TV unit is completed, I began assembling the frame of the sideboard and bookcase. The steps here are similar, starting with attaching the legs to the base. The difference is that it is a 3 meter long unit, which was a bit challenging to do alone. After connecting the rest of the base with the TV unit, it's just a matter of attaching some screws and installing the frame of the cabinets. I had to remove the light panels from the wall as they sit right behind the bookcase. Fortunately, I use command strips which is very easy to remove and leave no marks on the wall. As I am looking to plug a few electronics on the sideboard, I needed to find a way to route all the cables into the cabinet. So, I removed the back panel and used a hole saw to make an opening for the cable and power board. It is a fairly easy process as it is made out of thin fiber board. Then, simply bring the back panel back into its place and route the power board inside. With the whole frame assembled, it is now time to install the doors, drawers, and dividers. Before I move on, I would like to briefly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. 
Whether you're a small business, creator, or simply looking to build an online presence, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create professionally designed website. As my YouTube channel grew, I have been looking to build a personal website to allow submissions for my new house to home series, as well as a place where I can link all products and images from my projects. With Squarespace, this process has been completely effortless, and my website is scheduled to go live within this month. There are also many useful tools in the platform, from blogging to analytics and so much more. If you're looking to build a website, I highly recommend you go check them out. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Lowell to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Before I installed the doors, I got a couple of handles and knobs from a local distributor in order to customize the look. I started with the doors for the TV unit, with a half moon pattern on each side that forms a full moon when closed. Simply mark and drill the holes before installing the door and the hinges. Once the door is installed, I screw in the handles with the holes I made earlier. It was a little tricky but the end result looks great and contrasts nicely with the whitewashed oak cabinet. The full circular pattern also acts like an object on its own, creating interest to an otherwise plain cabinet. After the TV unit is completed, I started building the drawers for the sideboard. It is a pretty straightforward process of building the drawer frame, installing the runners, and attaching them together with a latch on the bottom of the drawer. For the top drawer, I installed a simple round knob and used a drill template to help guide in marking the hole. It made the process so much easier and helps avoid misalignment with the other drawers. I then repeat the whole process and installed all four drawers for the sideboard. On both ends of the sideboard, I went for a door configuration similar to the ones on the TV unit. This allowed for different type of storage mainly to store bigger and heavier items. I repeated similar steps for the bookcase with two drawers and a shelf divider. Once everything is installed, it is now time to style the space, starting with a few electronics which I have determined its placement early on. The rest is usually a trial and error process where I keep moving things around until I'm happy with how it looks. I also added a lot of plants throughout the space to give life to the space and variation in height, shape, and texture. Taking care of plants and watching it grow is very rewarding and has become one of my favorite pastime during these lockdown periods. On the bookshelf I've placed some cooking and plant care books, which also helps to add a pop of color. One of the main functions of this storage unit is the coffee bar that sits on top of the sideboard. Before starting the project, I got myself a Breville Bambino espresso machine in truffle black, which not only looks amazing, but is capable of pulling decent shots. I paired this with the Mignon Manuale coffee grinder from Italian company Eureka, which is a highly regarded budget coffee grinder. While I've always enjoyed a good cup of espresso, I've never made one myself and this has been a great learning experience. The whole process of experimenting, grinding the beans, tamping, and pulling my own shots at home is a relaxing routine to start my day and reward myself with a good cup of coffee. Thank you. 
apart from placing objects on top, these units also provide us with plenty of additional storage. A total of 6 cabinets and 4 cupboards, with the top drawers to store our coffee and tea equipment and extra mugs. Table management is another important thing that is often overlooked, which I have tucked neatly inside the cupboards. This left the bottom of the unit clear of cable mass and provide an airy feel to the space with the thin matte black legs. The final part is the tech, where I've installed Philips Hue bulbs to change temperature and a Sonos speaker to play the same music throughout the apartment. Over the next month, I'll be doing more makeovers to the living room, some of which includes adding a curtain and replacing the couch which is outdated. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.